All right. Thank you so much for that introduction. Uh, it's great to be with a bunch of Moho users, either uh, current or maybe future. Um, today, we're going to go through how to draw a character in Moho from, um, from outlines to color, and then how to rig that character uh, so that it's functional and ready to animate. And that's where we'll stop today due to time constraints. Um, on the screen, I have uh, all of the all of the stages that we'll go through, and I might jump forward in time um, when I see the the timer kind of beep at me to to get moving. Um, I could draw all day, and we could spend hours doing this, but uh, we'll this will be kind of a quick one. So <clears throat> let's begin. I do have a sketch that I've made um, already, and I'm going to pull that up here. This is my simple sketch. Um, I, I tried to make it as simple and doable as possible in a short amount of time. So this is a, um, my daughter lost her tooth and uh, we kind of brainstormed around the family about a character that we could make. So this is a tooth collector of some sort. And I did a lot of like thought about all the parts that could be included. I do like some, you know, some variety and some contrast where he's, this character's got a tutu, but he's kind of a monster and has antlers and a magic wand. So uh, let's get to it. We want to bring in a sketch um, to Moho. And you can do that two ways. You can bring in a layer or you can bring in a, um, a, a tracing image. So under the view menu, I'd go to select tracing image. And I'd pick that sketch. That's sketch number two for me. And there she is. It's transparent. Um, and now I'm ready to start drawing. I am using a Wacom tablet, so um, this will help me uh, draw my character a little bit quicker. So I'm gonna start breaking down this character into parts, and I would recommend drawing everything in separate layers if possible, that just gives you more control. Um, the first thing I'm gonna start with is the body or torso. So this kind of blob right in the middle. Um, I do start with layer one, so I'm just gonna rename that torso. Okay, I like to use the add points tool. Um, this tool is going to auto stroke and auto fill. I like to draw with sharp corners. That's just how I like to do it. Um, you should experiment with this button right here, either starts with straight lines or curvy lines. Um, and it'll draw with a white fill and a black stroke. That's totally fine. My goal here, actually I'm gonna set this to this width to two. My goal here is just to get the shapes down and then I'm gonna color it later. Some people like to color as they go, but here we go. So with this tool, I click and drag, and I'm not gonna worry about this curve right here. I'm just gonna create this basic kind of blocky shape as I go around. I can either click auto weld before I draw, or I can hit enter. And I don't know if you heard the snap, but that's the proof that it actually joined together. I use keyboard shortcuts, so I'm gonna use this transformation tool here. And if I need to modify, I can do that now. Okay, I can pull points. Next is the curvature tool. This one right here, or C. I'm just gonna start dragging out those shapes, pulling out my Bezier handles so that, there's my character there, there's my, there's my torso. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, anything I can do to make my life easier is what I'm gonna try to pick. I know that I have a second shape, kind of the belly of this creature here. If I copy and paste this shape, it's gonna place a copy right on top, Control C, Control V. I'm just gonna do that, because that's easy. And then maybe I modify some points. I find that to be an easy way to draw. Draw something and then modify it if you need to either copying or the original. And that's where I'm gonna go right there, is just outlines. I can toggle my tracing image on and off by Control or Command Y. I am on a Mac right now, so I apologize if you're not. Oops, that's not it. We need to uh, Control or Command U, that's the one. So you can toggle that on and off to see what you're actually drawing. All right, there's my torso. On to the next thing. Let's draw another vector layer. And let's do the maybe a wing. I try to notice when I have symmetrical things. So I have one wing here, and I have one wing there. 
have other things that are symmetrical like ears or like horns or antlers, legs, arms. All you need to do is draw it once and then duplicate it and flip it. So here's that process, a wing. A for add points. Again, I'm just gonna go through and try to draw what I think should be a wing. Get my curvature tool, here's a trick. Grab these three, I'm holding shift in the select points tool. And then I'm gonna press C and it's gonna curve all three of those out at the same time, done. Um, I could add other things like maybe I add some lines here. Add point tool will create a line. If I wanna put a stroke on that, I have to actually click my um, paint bucket tool and then click the line. I could do that a couple more times or I could copy and paste it. There we go. Okay, there's my wing. Um, the wing is above the torso, so I'm gonna move that down. The stack, so now it's behind. Looking pretty good. I have another wing. So if I was to name this a little bit better, um, this is the wing on the right side of the character for me. Now, some people name it left wing because that's the character's wing. I probably do it backwards, but this is the right wing to me, so that's how I'm gonna name things. I need another wing. So with that layer selected, I can duplicate that. I wanna call this one left wing. I'd like it to be over here and flipped. So you can flip layers or you can flip art. Um, I'm gonna flip the art. So I'm gonna select all the points and flip with this icon here. I can move it into position and there you go. So you drew one wing, duplicated it. It's a lot easier. Okay, moving on, we need to draw the head, some ears, facial features. Um, and so let's go kind of start up here. Um, let's do the head. Or face, either one. Okay, same tool. So it's a lot of repetition. And I'm actually going to the peaks in the valleys of where this character's kind of got some fur on it, but I know with my curvature tool, I can fix it. Maybe there's a point hidden behind the antler. Peaks and valleys, enter to close that shape. Hitting escape will deselect points. That's a nice shortcut. Kind of reposition things if you need to. And then breaking out the curvature tool, The great part about this program is that you can easily fix things later. And there's a, a few ways to draw. Like if you don't like this curvature uh, technique, you can also draw with curves and fix them later as well. There's some texturing going on inside of the character as well. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use a different tool. Um, this is the freehand tool. So auto stroke, it's gonna put a stroke on things. If I wanted to hand draw things, um, I have a tablet you know, that I'm using instead of a mouse, but you can use a um, mouse as well. I'm just gonna draw out some, um, some lines. And this face is behind the body, so I would, or the head is behind the torso. So I'm gonna drag that up. I'm not worried about the texture, the thickness of the shapes, I'm just, trying to get the shape down. Coloring is the kind of the next step. Okay, um, I'm gonna draw an ear. Right ear, rear. Another thing we could do here, we don't wanna be so silly with our naming. You could capitalize the ear right there. Add points tool. Enter. Do you see there's a lot of repetition? There's the ear. 
if I wanted this line here to be in there. Um, I'm going to pull out some points. I'm hitting escape so I deselect points um, before I do curvature. Um, here's another thing to try. If I don't want to go through that process for this line here, I could copy and paste this line, control C, control V, and just change it. Sometimes that's easier. Okay. Another tool to use right here, it depends on where you want this ear. I might put it behind the head or in front of it, is if I wanted to hide this line, there's a great tool right here, which is hide edge. And that'll hide that, hide that edge. So you got to play around with where you want that ear. I'm going to leave it in front of the head for now. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's do an antler. I'm going to put both antlers on the same layer. So we'll call this antlers. And my drawing has curves to it, but I'm going to do it with straight lines so it's quicker. Kind of a geometric sort of look to it. I'm going to create a little bit of space inside of these antlers because maybe down the road I want to put some sort of shadowing on the inside. If I create them too thin, then I wouldn't have that opportunity. Another way you could do this is with a stroke, just a line, and you could control the thickness of it. So lots of ways to go about it, but that's what we're going to do today. Um, I want two antlers. I want them to be symmetrical. So again, I'm going to use the same technique. I already have my points selected, but grab my uh, move points tool. I'm going to copy paste, flip. There we go. Haven't saved my work. Make sure you save often. Best shortcut, Commander Control S. All right, the little pencil that goes away. Make sure that I have my work saved. So you would continue down all of these shapes, creating um, as many um, duplicates as possible. You know, flipping like the legs, you would flip the arms, you could flip um, eyes, you could flip that sort of stuff. Um, but that's the gist of it. We're just going to go through and keep drawing everything. Um, I've already moved forward into the next uh, phase. Here is my, um, I'm going to turn on anti-aliasing so it doesn't look so pixelated here. This is my completed outline um, right here. So I have all of my layers down here. Um, one thing that I've done is created a switch layer. If you've never used a switch layer, it's great for things like eyes or different hand versions, or um, you can do so many things with it. But eyes is a, it's a great example of, of how to use them. Create two layers in two different states. If you select both layers, you can right click and group them. And then after that, you can convert that group to a switch. And then you can choose which state those are in. So Great way to make a blink if you wanted to. Um, so the next step is coloring. And we'll spend a little bit of time here on, on coloring. Um, I would definitely recommend creating styles for your work. And let me demonstrate how to do that and then maybe kind of a why behind it. Um, another thing is color is kind of difficult for me, especially I, I'm not great with picking colors or what goes next to each other. So I use websites like Adobe Color, color.adobe.com, um, to pick color themes that are very simple, like five colors maximum. And then I use that to color my work with. Um, sometimes I'm given that work by other artists, so I don't have to think about it at all. I have a sketch here that has colors. I have that one, which is kind of my final sketch. I can pick colors from that if I want to, or I've created color swatches over here on my simple one. So I'm going to drag this in as a layer now. I'm on frame zero. I'm just going to drag this over. If you drag and drop, that works. I'm just going to put that on the top layer, make that a little smaller. I'm just dragging this in for color purposes. OK. So let's make a style. And the first one I'd want to make is fur, because I'm going to use fur for the face, the body, the legs, and the arms. So over here in my style panel, I'd go down to style and then new. 
call this fur. And let's pick some colors. Um, I'm always going to say before I'm doing this, just to make sure, fur, probably this middle color. That's going to be the fill. The stroke is going to be this darker color. Maybe a line width of two. I can change this later, as long as I'm applying the style. And then maybe I want a fuzzy edge. Instead of just a straight edge or a straight stroke, I would pick from the brushes panel. And I like, let's say this one. You can play with all these settings, but I like this setting right out of the box. Okay. Um, then we're going to draw with that, or we're going to apply that style to our art. Shortcut. Hit Option or Alt and right click. You'll pick the layer out of the stack instead of hunting for it. There it is. I know I'm on it right now. Okay, in order to color, we need to use a different tool. This tool right here is the Select Shape tool or Q. I want to color the, the face or the head with this fur. And I've already created styles, but um, I'm going to pick the one that I just made there, fur. And there it is. Here's the cool part about styles. I think this this one. OK. If I changed, let's say, the width to 4 for the stroke, it applies that style to your character. So definitely use that. And it's easy to, um, easy to apply to more things. So I'm going to do the ears now. A little confusing that I have two, but that's okay. Let's say if I wanted the ears to be a little lighter. I didn't want to pick that style. So um, here's a technique. If I have fur as a style on this, right, I can override the color by clicking that box there and then picking a color that works for me. Maybe his ears are pink or something like that. It's up to you what what that uh, looks like, and you can override. So let's say if I wanted to override this one, I could use my color picker. I could also make a new style. So it's up to you how many times you're going to use that. So I'm just going to fix the ears. That's going to be fur. OK, so I'd go through and recolor everything. So I'm going to make um, maybe another uh, another preset. I don't have it set in here, but I want to make one called skin. So I already have the, the name here. So I'm just going to pick that because it's already there. Skin. Set my color. Skin's going to be there. You can see I already have some things selected as, as skin. So it's applying that. It's changing it already. Um, so styles are super powerful. Use them if you can, it makes your life easier. And then you can override them um, if you need to later. So that's coloring. I would just go through and color everything and make sure that I'm happy with it, of course. Make sure you're saving often so you don't lose your work. So I've, I've colored everything. So I'm gonna kind of skip forward. Here's everything colored. I have my, my styles, my fur and my skin. Okay, pretty basic um, version of this. This is the this is the one that I that I did here. I was a little more ambitious when I started, and I had a lot of detail when I started. And I was like, I tried this one, and it took way too long. So, the simple version right here is really cool. I'm I'm liking where it is. Now it's time to start rigging my character. And rigging is um, is pretty simple. Um, depending on what you're doing, you can always make really complicated rigs and depends if you want to set your character up to kind of uh, live for a long time, I guess. If you're using it over and over and over again, if it's in a big long production, you may want to spend more time with all of the settings and all of the controls and everything like that. I often work with characters that are used just a little bit. I'm working on a video right now where it's a two minute video and the character that I'm using is is once that video is over, that character's done, and I don't need a ton of ton of control. So this is basic rigging. Um, let's see. What I've done is I've created a 
a folder. Actually, I'm going to redo this step because I'd like to show you that. Pretend that wasn't there. Okay, here's how you do it. Select all your layers. Select the first layer. Scroll down to the bottom. I'm going to hold Shift. Select them all. You can right-click on any layer, and you're going to group them. Let's give this a name. Enter. Um, and then I want to convert this to a bone folder. Right click and convert to bone. Now we're ready to rig. You'll notice that some new tools are popping up over here. Those bone tools weren't there before. All right, so let's start rigging. Here's what I like to do. Press A for add bone and I'd like a control bone. And I usually go like kind of belly button, depending on what this is. This is a two-legged character. So maybe a four-legged character is going to be different. But where is the main center of gravity of this thing? And um, and modify from there. So I'm going to create a huge uh, bone that goes out one side or the other that I can kind of grab onto and control the character. The next one is going to go from this bone and probably up towards the up the up the torso. Anytime a bone is red. That means it's active. The next bone you draw will be a child of that bone. So if I was to draw another one, I have the same tool. I'm just going to come up, kind of, kind of mid-chest, and there's the next one. Notice it turns red, and the previous one is blue. I can check my parenting structure. This is important to get it right Press, by pressing P. The bone here is pointing to its parent. So the children follow the parents. At least in Moho, they do. In real life, not so much. Okay, so I'm going to grab my Add Points tool and continue that. I want my torso to have two parts, so it kind of bends a little bit. It's got a little more life to it. If you just make one bone, it's a little stiff. And then one more for the head. I want ear bones. That sounds weird, but I want my ears to move independently so you can wiggle them a little bit. So if I draw my next one here, that one is a uh, parent or a child of the previous one on, on the head. But I need this next one, my left ear bone, to be a child of the head bone. So if I was to draw this, that's wrong. If I press P, this <laughs> this ear bone is a child of this ear bone. And that was that's not going to move properly. So I'm going to undo that, Control-Z. Instead, I have to select my bone here and then draw another one if I press P. and Check that parenting, that's proper, that's correct. Okay, so I'm gonna go through and kind of do that, like the wings, you know, they're probably gonna be parents of maybe the, you know, the first bone here. And I'm selecting the bone, kind of doing that sort of thing. The arms are gonna be children of the, kind of the torso bone. Maybe three bones for the arms. There's gotta be an elbow joint, that sort of stuff. This is where it gets interesting. And uh, so what I'm going to do is make a bone that goes there. And um, this is a different kind of situation. I have a staff that's going to be sitting on the ground. Unlike the bone over here, it's very different. It's going to be kind of stuck. So I want a, actually a bone that comes all the way down to the floor like that. If I press P and check my parenting, everything should kind of oops, go back up the parenting chain. Okay, continuing legs. I like to parent like this. Everything's kind of pointing back to that one bone there. So legs go down to the knee, go down to the ankle, over to the foot. Do it again. This one can kind of do that, something like that. Okay, that's the parenting structure there. Um, the next steps would be to um, create some target bones. I need three of them. I need one for each leg and then one for the staff. And the way you create a target bone, or let's define a target bone. A target bone is what another bone is continually going to point to. And this creates the opportunity to have feet stick to the ground or a bone kind of always point to another one. So there's some other uses. So Feet, probably 99% of the time, I'm using target bones for those. Sometimes I'll need a strange situation like this 
to create a target bone. They're very useful. And I think the people who thought of it, it is brilliant. Here's how you do it. You got to deselect a bone by pressing B and clicking. That's one way to do it. You don't want any bones selected. A for make new bone. I'm always living on this bone folder. If you're moving around to different layers, it doesn't work. So make sure you're on that bone folder. Target bone for this leg is going to be here. While I'm here, I'm actually going to name this left foot. That's the name of the bone. They name them, uh, the program names them automatically for you, but those are handy to name and I'll show you why. Deselect a bone, drag another one down. Let's call this right foot. And one more, hitting escape bone. I'll call this staff. Okay, so there's our um, bone structure. Everything should be should be made. Um, another thing to to start off with is um, turning off the bone strength to all the bones. This is something I do. So if I press B and I select all my bones, click and drag around. I want to check this bone strength. Or if I press S, these red sort of force fields they control the artwork around them. And if you're not watching it, your character, he act, the character will actually move right now if I, if I choose to. If I start moving this around, everything is actually moving. But you'll not notice it's more of a warping. So it's kind of neat that everything moves already, but bone strength is one type of rigging um, that I'll use sparingly. So I'm going to turn it off. Press S, you can either click and drag to the right or left or type a zero right here. Bone strength is zero on everything. Okay, so there's our rig. If I press P, that's what she kind of looks like. Everything's kind of pointed towards the middle. We have some interesting target bones that we'll start connecting here in a bit. I do want to move on to the next rig and show you how to... Um, how to attach your artwork to bones. A couple of methods. The first one, the easy one, is just sticking a layer to a bone. So let's say the mouth, for example. This mouth should be connected to this bone all the time. I can use several methods, but the easy one is this tool here, bind layer tool. So there's just a repetition to this. Select your layer. Select the bind layer tool and then click on the bone you want to stick it to. If you click that, you'll see this bright red sort of indicator that that layer is now stuck to that bone. You can do multiple layers too if you want to. I know the eyes and the eyebrow and the head all should be attached to that layer. So, eyebrow, eyes, antlers as well, head, all of those should be stuck to that bone. So I select my layers, select the bind layer tool, and then boop, all of those layers are now stuck to that bone. Definitely go through and test things because you might miss something and you'll find out, oh, it's not working right. If you kind of test it as you go, um, maybe there's less mistakes to make. So going up to your bone folder layer, manipulate bone. This is how we test and animate, or Z. If I move the head around, everything that I've bound to that layer is now sticking. So I could go through and do the rest of uh, rest of the character. Um, I'm going to do a couple of other styles of rigging, and um, let's do let's say the the legs. Legs are are a little challenging. I'll do the left leg. This is a using the bind points tool. So I want if I use this whole layer, and I use that same method, you know, the whole leg moves, which is not ideal. I don't want to do that. To unbind it, I'm going to click off of there. Instead, I'm going to use point binding. So again, there's a repetition to this. Select your layer, which I have here. Press B. Select the bone you want to attach to. 
press I or the find points tool and select the points you want to stick to that bone. Instead of a layer, it's points. So I'm going to select those four points. And then you could either hit enter or you can hit this find points tool or button here. Those points now turn bright red. And if I was to move, move those around, now those points are stuck to that bone. Okay, so I'm going to continue along that process and get the whole leg kind of stuck. I'm going to grab these points for this, not the knee. Hit enter. You notice they are color coded to the bone that you've selected. The foot. There we go. So now that leg is moving properly as far as those three bones go. Um, while we're here, let's talk about things you can do to help this leg out. I like to add some IK stretching to my legs because if you want your character to kind of be, um, be able to jump or, or kind of look like it's uh, elastic, which is a nice kind of look, for cartoons, it depends. Open up your bone constraints menu and set those um, set those bones to two on the maximum IK stretching or 1.5 or so. It's kind of a cool look. Another thing you can do is the foot is to set it to independent angle. Um, so it doesn't rotate while you're moving the character. It stays horizontal on the floor. The last part we need to do is targeting. I need this bone to target this bone, um, left foot. In order to do that, I have to say, all right, this bone, you're gonna target another bone. And this again, helps feet stick to the ground without target bones, things shift around and move around quite a bit. You'll see floaty feet, um, things that just kind of look like they're not grounded in your reality. So here's how you do it. Select your bone, pull up that bone constraints again, and select your target. If you've named it, good for you. It's easy to find, otherwise it's a number. Left foot. And you'll know you've done it right if you see that little target. Nailed it. Let's test this out. Let's see if this works right. So I can't move any of the bones now in the leg, but the target bone is working great. And if I move my rig, just focus on that leg. Obviously, everything else isn't attached. But now I have full control. If I go to frame one, I can actually move the um, foot as well. That's a lot more control than I had before. Okay. Let's see. I want to select those points. Okay, moving on. Um, I would do the same thing with uh, the staff. I would have that targeted there. Um, some other things I could I could do as well. Sometimes I like to mix um, methods. Um, I'm going to show you another method here for the body. Um, I told you to turn off the uh, bone strength, but maybe you do want to use that at some point. So I'm going to use that here. The torso I want it to bend, but I don't want to use layer binding and I don't want to use point binding. I could, but I don't want to. I want to be quick about it. Select your bones, select your layer, which is your torso. And then you can use this function here, bone, um, use selected bones for flexi binding or this shortcut here. And those will turn kind of a brighter red, not fully red like a layer binding. Now I do need to turn bone strength on for this in order for it to work. So I'm gonna go back about up to my bone folder. And just for those two bones, I wanna turn bone strength back on. I'm trying to cover up kind of the area of the torso. So just think about this force field needs to kind of surround the art. The top bone looks good, hit escape. Just continue that one. Now, if I test that out, the body is kind of turning and it's got it's got this kind of stretch to it i could just play around with both bone strength to see you know what works there but 
that's working pretty good. Okay, so I would go through the rest of this and attach layers, either bone uh, layer binding or point binding, or maybe a, uh, maybe flexi binding, or you can do a combination of things too. So those are just tools in the toolbox to kind of keep in the back of your mind of, oh, well, I might need that here and I might need that there. Uh, this is the final, final rig. So I have everything ready to go, rigged up. All my targets are there. Um, notice how the staff works. So this is stuck to the ground as well. I can pick it up if I want to. So if the character wanted to walk, I could do that. But if I'm just moving the character, it's stuck there. I do have some IK stretching happening probably on the arms, wings, ears, head, everything, even the tutu is rigged up in the bucket. So this thing is fully ready to animate. Um, so after this, you know, the next step is, all right, are you, are you happy with your work? Are you ready to animate? Now you have a rigged character. It's fully drawn. What's the next step? Are you going to start creating your, you know, your first scene with this? Um, usually that's where, where you'd go. It depends on the amount of time that you had. I do have about five minutes left. Um, I want to talk about where you could possibly push this character. Um, this is super basic, so I would say, you know, aim for this. If you can, just kind of some basic basic structure, but then you can push things. So this is this is the character that I wanted to try to make with the time, a little more detail and stuff like that. So I did spend a little bit of time with another version of this. So I do want to show you some things that I was working on. Uh, the first thing that I didn't have time for today was masking and shadows. So um, I created oops, a lot more layers here. So in the torso, for example, there's a shadow layer, there's the inner torso, there's also a texture, which is just like Photoshop, kind of um, just kind of a file here. If I open up the body, it's just kind of painted and blurred and stuff like that. So you can import graphics too, instead of just drawing with shapes, because I wanted there to be a little bit more, more texture to them. The, folder has masking on it. If I right click, oops, if I double click and go to masking, I can mask things. Um, I love the new feature. Thank you so much for putting this here. Right click and you can choose the masking that happens right here. This is so, such a big deal. Um, it was very difficult to do before. So thank you. Thank you. Another thing that I did was random stroke width. This is line quality work. Um, so if you look at the head, for example, or let's do the ear maybe the ear. If I select all of those vectors and I press command or control D, I have this random line width option. This just gives it kind of a more organic feel. So everything's randomized. Nothing is the same thickness. Uh, another thing I did is created a switch layer for the mouths. So there's a closed mouth there and an open mouth and a switch layer. So you could do as many switches as you want to. Another thing I just discovered is you can put emojis in your text instead of text. I think it's not as efficient as typing it out, but it's kind of fun. You gotta have fun while you're working. So this one and this one, I can use it, uh, use pictures instead of words. Uh, another thing that I, I did is a, an alternative way to rig the staff. So I did a target bone up here and a target bone down here. And if you look at the bone structure, it's still rigged the same way, but this bone right here is targeting this bone. So it, it just moves in a bit of a different way. Um, the hand moves in a, in a different way. Um, this bend, of course, is not great, but um, there are different ways to rig. So if you try something, you're like, ah, that doesn't work. Um, try it a different way. There's not one right way to do things. Uh, let's see, other things that we did, uh, we did some actions. So if I go back to, let's see, I believe this one. 
and I bend this down. This bend right here isn't the best. So if you bend it too far, you'll see eh, that's starting to get pretty bad. So what we can do is we can do some, we can pull up the actions panel. Uh, let's see, that's not the one. There we go. If I pull up my actions panel, No, it's not there. So we can uh, we can add actions to to help this. Uh, just find some YouTube videos on on how to do that. So I could say, all right, this bone is needs to bend in a better way. So I did some actions on this. Sorry, they're not showing up. That's odd. Um, you can see this this bone right here isn't cooperating, but this one I added a little bit of a sharper bend. So the bending legs is is helping uh, being helped through actions. Um, again, the texture is being um, imported. So I have textures for legs and arms. I have a texture for the face and a texture for the body. Um, you can save these as Photoshop files. These are the legs and arms. This is the body. And this is the face. So just open them in some pixel editor and Saved them. You can save them as a JPEG or a PSD file or a PNG file if you want transparency to them. Um, another thing I did was created some smart bone dials. Everybody loves these, so I'm going to turn on my label here so you can see. I did a turn, so you can create a little bit of a turn. Lots of tutorials out there. I had the wings turn and the head turn, so that just creates this ability to pose our character a little bit better, a little more action. The action pose, right? Also have a beard bone, so there's that too. And then an eyebrow. Oops. Of course, live TV, things are working in a different way. There we go, eyebrow. And then finally, the last thing I did was I added bugs to the antlers. So these are frame by frame layers. And all you do is you go to new frame by frame and then you can draw frame by frame things. These are just, I used the fur um, style and I did a frame by frame sequence. And if I play this real quick, you can see those bugs are looping. I did a cycle on each layer and it just looks like he's got bugs in his antlers. So I thought that was a cool look. So there it is. My time is up. I uh, hope you liked it. Um, I'm looking forward to some questions from you on any part of it. Um, don't hesitate to shout out what you want to know or, or anything about uh, work that I do outside of this crazy uh, tooth fairy creature. Well, thank you so much, Jared. This has been a really great webinar. Uh, everybody loved it and we have a few questions uh, okay so let's shoot a few of them a more general one is how has moho helped you in your creative process um it's helped me be um be able to experiment with ideas quickly i find moho to be a uh, a program where i can work through ideas quickly and then change them without a whole lot of like pain um so it it it's efficient, it's quick. Um, I have a friend who uses an alternative program and we worked on a product together and he would look at me and like, how did you do that so quickly? And it's just because the tools are, they're easy. They're easy to use comparatively. And uh, so it helps me be creative by giving me more time to experiment. Mm -hmm. And someone asked also, how did you learn uh, Moho? Did you looked at tutorials? Mm. Uh, books. Yeah. So when I learned Moho, when I first picked it up, I think it was it was called Anime Studio, and I think it was version two. I want to say 2006. My son was one year old, and that's when I picked it up. And there wasn't a lot of documentation. It was more uh, printed uh, printed documentation. So it was a little harder to learn because there wasn't all this stuff out there. You know, YouTube wasn't as big as it is. So um, a lot of you know trial and error to begin with. I had a purpose, so I would recommend that, having a purpose for your work. Um, I had a film contest that I wanted to try to enter. So I had a purpose to, to try to learn it. 
Um, and then after a while, there were there were more videos out there that helped. And the another really great thing is every time there's a new webinar like this or a new product that would be released, watch those because they'll show you the new features every time. And then you add to your you know to your library of knowledge. Um, so you're not trying to learn everything at once. So start small, have a have a purpose, and then just continue your learning. I, I've been using this for what 15 years now, so <laughs> take some time. Yes, uh, experience uh, gives you a lot of uh, of the knowledge that you need mm -hmm. to uh, learn Definitely. about Moho. Um, Cindy Calvados, she asks. Um, Hi, do you only draw your characters directly in Moho or do you use sometimes uh, import the assets from another vector software, example Illustrator? Yes, um, I think drawing in Moho is, is pretty efficient if you, if you get it down, it's a little different. Um, a lot of the work that I do will be from Illustrator and you save it as an SV, SVG file and that translates pretty well. You might get some color shifting or a little bit of difference. You can't bring in transparencies or any of the, you know, the fun stuff from Illustrator. So that's an efficient way. Also, I do get artwork from other artists that comes in Illustrator. So a lot of my work is from other people and my job is to make it move. Um, if I wanted to though, I can draw in Moho and, and even Photoshop or Illustrator. It's nice to have all of those tools in your toolbox, but Illustrator to Moho is a great pipeline. And, and when you start rigging your characters, do you rig them depending on the complexity of the scene that they will be they will be set? Or is there like a basic uh, mm -hmm. rig that you create for your yep. animations? Yeah, I would always recommend um, rigging in a sort of like T pose. So if I if I bring this character back to frame one, um, I I actually struck a pose with this character, which is not my normal. Um, I would definitely like rig this character, even this foot right here, um, I wouldn't make it front facing, I would make it side facing. So you have a symmetrical sort of character and that's the base pose. From there, you build it out as you need to. Um, I would build it as you go, um, but some people like to build it all and then use it later. But if you start with this pose, it gives you a lot of flexibility about what to do. Uh, definitely don't uh, don't start rigging a character who's posed already because you're kind of limited and you'll find, oh, this foot doesn't actually move the way I want it to, or I've bent this arm and I want it to bend the other way and it's not capable of that. So you, you might have more work if you strike a pose versus a very symmetrical T-pose to begin with. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, another question from Jan Rotten. Can you create bones or animation templates for different characters that have the same body proportions? Yeah, that's a that's an interesting idea. I've thought about doing that. Um, everything's so unique anymore that it's like mm, it doesn't really work. But yeah, you could take I could I could copy all of these bones um, just by copying them. And if I made a new um, oops, if I made a new bone folder, then you can. Oops, not that. You can paste bones back and forth into new documents. So yeah, if you had a character that was the same structure, had two arms, two, two legs, and the same sort of build and the same size, sure. You could also um, save this as a file and replace everything. You could just bring in your new art and put it on top. So templating would be wise if you had a lot of repetition. Um, I don't personally do that because everything's kind of custom. All the proportions are all different. Everybody's art is different. So definitely possible, but not something I do a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Another question would be, uh, what's your favorite project made with Moho? Can you share a project of yours that you feel proud of, how you achieve the, the character, mm -hmm. how it's animated? Let's see. Um, one of my favorite things that I made was um, I did a uh, Star Wars um, short film for the Star Wars celebration several years ago, and it was uh, it was kind of a spoof on the office culture. Like, and we tried to um, make the Death Star this kind of like office where people are employed, 
and uh, it's it all started with the Moho characters of of uh, the main actors of that movie, and uh, and the the part that I loved though was working with my friend and writing it. Um, the animation took care of itself. Moho was an easy program, so uh, for me, so I could I could animate it pretty easily. But I got to collaborate. And the idea was hilarious, and it's kind of been the golden goose in my life. It's been, it's given me a lot of opportunities to do some really fun stuff. So, so Moho has really allowed me to unlock a lot of creativity, and and I don't have to worry about the animation part so much. I do have to worry about the the writing part <laughs> or the story part. So the animations, you know, all the tools are there for me. Um, <laughs> but that that's probably one of my favorites. Yeah. Awesome. And there's a question more technical uh, from Sage Kelly. Uh, when you're making a complicated project, do you make it all in one main project or do you separate them in different projects and then blend it together in another software? Um, I, I'm not sure if they're asking about like backgrounds and stuff like that. Um, so my main pipeline would be character animations done in Moho that would be rendered out as a transparency uh, or image sequence and brought into, let's say, Adobe After Effects for compositing and background work. So I don't typically work in Moho for backgrounds or full scenes. Um, so it's mostly character work. If I had a really complicated character, you know, it, it would be all self-contained. Um, potentially there's different version of that, versions of that character. Maybe there's a a front-facing one like this, and maybe there's a back-facing one that is in another file. So I'd have two different files. Um, I've done that. Or you could have one Moho project file that has both the front and the back character. Maybe you want to actually show that character flipping around, and you'd need to switch back and forth between them in the in this sort of tab. So typically, it's one character per Moho project that's exported, um, but Never know. You might need to make it more complicated within within one sort of project file. Mm -hmm. And here's another question regarding controllers. Do you create tons of controllers for your characters? Um, you can try to keep them simple. You know, I've seen people that are way better at controllers than me. It amazes me what is out there. My work is very simple. Um, I kind of work in a way where I build the the most minimal rig possible to begin with mm -hmm. and that rig will get more complicated as i go so for example i have a two minute video scene one characters in it and all i need that character to do is kind of look up and make a hand gesture or something like that but scene two the character has to walk and have feet and has to turn so i'm going to take that project file and then add to it so by the time i'm done with my project character 10 is going to be more complex than character one um, that just helps me be efficient with my time um, versus setting it all up and maybe I use stuff and maybe I don't. Um, I used to do that, but I found that I didn't really use half the stuff that I set up. So um, mm -hmm. it's really about time and being able to spend time with my, my friends and family outside of doing just a ton of setup for a character I may or may not use. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a question regarding the shadings and also about the texture. I know you shared a bit uh, using mm -hmm. the texture. Uh, if, if you could share quickly how do you mask it to... Sure. Yeah, um, let's see. Let's see. So let's let's try the, the head part here. So I have um, a folder and I have that original uh, vector artwork that I drew right here. I'm just going to turn off the texture. So there's there's that layer right there. Um, and then what you can do is you can bring in a, a layer of art. So I'll go ahead and bring that in. File, make sure I'm on frame zero. Frame zero is the magic frame. I'm gonna do a file, import, and general. I'm gonna find that folder. Keep things in folders, help yourself out. Choose my layer. And it's, it's brought in, there it is. It's pretty big, so I might have to resize it. I'm not great at getting the size right to begin with, so let's try to size that appropriately. Um, 
I did take a screenshot of this character to try to get the shape right, and I brought that into Photoshop. So if you're wondering, well, how the heck did you do that? Anyway, um, bringing that in, let me actually turn off masking. So this is what it would look like, right? So you'd have a folder, you'd have your texture, and then you'd have your art. And all you do is you right click and you say, all right, mask inside the bottom layer, like that. Um, there are some uh, details. If you don't have the exclude stroke on, if they had a stroke on your artwork, you'd want to go in. I just double clicked on that vector art layer and turned on exclude stroke so then you see them. So that's a nice option as well. So hopefully that is helpful. Yes, yes. Um, and one of the, the last questions is, mm -hmm. uh, how do you compare Moho with other software and what do you like best about Moho? Um, let's say, um, you know, there's other competitors like Harmony or Adobe Animate or um, even After Effects. So Animate's awesome because you can do it all in one program similar to Moho. So I think that's probably, uh, that's a close competitor. Uh, Harmony's, um, so let's say Adobe Animate comes with the, your Creative Cloud subscription. So, you know, affordability, good. Controls for bones, nowhere close to Moho. Um, it's just not even close to what they can do. So Moho gets the check mark there. Harmony uh, costs way more. I, I don't even know the price. I think it's a thousand dollars or more for uh, for a license. Probably more more like two thousand. Um, you can draw really well in that program. Um, but the rigging system again is not is not where Moho is as far as I, I'm concerned. It's got different controls and and it's used in in a lot of production, so it's a pretty popular one. But price and rigging, I, I don't see the comparison at all. Um, After Effects has um, has a rigging possibilities, but every time I use it, it's super slow and uh, doesn't have the the abilities and, unless you get plugins. But still very slow. Um, compared to Moho. So Moho has, it has a lot of things on its side. It's affordable, it's, the tools are vast, and it it works quickly. Like it's a quick sort of editor. Like there's no way I could move this character in After Effects this quickly. It would be very laggy um, and so many layers to control. Just watch some tutorials on uh, Duik rigging in After Effects and you'll be like, what? <laughs> Compared to what we're what we're working with here, this uh, this has several layers, but it's super easy to understand comparatively. So hopefully that helps. Yeah, definitely. And just to close the webinar, uh, what would you say to anyone who's starting in the animation and see Moho as a tool for their project? Jared? Yes. Um, sorry, what was your question again? <laughs> I know you, you were uh, um, uh, using the, the character. So uh, what would you say to anyone who's uh, starting in the animation uh, industry and also who's uh, using uh, Moho as their animation tool? Oh, okay, I got it. Sorry, I thought you were asking questions of the audience, um, and I was kind of tuning out, and having fun with the character. So, um, <laughs> if you're if you're just starting um, starting to learn Moho, um, you know, start start as small as possible. So, you know, instead of creating something, actually, this is you know getting kind of complicated. We just wanted to kind of show you what was possible. Instead of doing that, you know, maybe your torso is that a square. And maybe your arms are, you know, they're they're just rectangles. And can you make a character out of just some basic shapes? And then next, can you rig that character so that it it can move? And then once you get the basics down, push yourself and maybe sketch some ideas out. Like, where do you think you can go with this? If you can't draw it on a tablet, draw it on a napkin or a piece of paper. And you can scan it and bring it in and, and draw right on top of it. And it's the same concept as what you've done here, but you can start pushing yourself a little further. Um, so that's the technical part, right? How to get started. Just start small. 
give yourself a chance to be successful and don't don't stress over like oh my gosh these these things are so complicated and and yeah but this is this is years of experience and it's we're just showing you what's possible that the next thing i would advise is have a purpose behind your work um you know you might just be playing with it to begin with but if you have a purpose like i'm going to make a school project with this and i'm going to have a character in my work nobody else is going to have that and i have a deadline by whenever that is that's going to push you um or maybe there's a film contest that you can enter or um something with your friends that you can do and then you'll you'll grow in that and that purpose will become bigger and bigger, and you'll be pushed by that um, by that purpose and by those deadlines. Um, but the main thing is just have fun, you know. Create something that's never been created. Use your imagination, and uh, and the uh, the hard parts of deadlines and projects will go away, and you'll just be enjoying it. Hopefully. Thank you so much, Jared. With those words of wisdom, we are closing this webinar. Uh, we want to say thanks to all of uh, the, uh, the attendees, uh, participants of today's webinar. Of course, we want to say thank you so much, uh, Jared, for a wonderful presentation. Great. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure to be here, and, and thank you so much for making great software that we can all use. Thank you. And I'm just going to share one last bit of information. Learn more about Moho uh, through our site, mohoanimation.com. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. So subscribe uh, to receive a notification once it's available to watch. Follow us also in our social media channels, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And of course, to follow Jared uh, projects, follow him on Instagram as Jared underscore. Hudley and his, his website, jaredhudley.com. And with that, we are closing another great webinar of Moho. Thank you so much, Jared. All right. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you all, and we'll see you on our next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.